On a recent trip to uh, another state, I was uh, graphically reminded of a story, an event that occurred in my life that was really quite um, ground-shaking. And it made me think of a verse written by Peter in 2 Peter chapter 3, in which he warned that in the last days, scoffers would come. That is, those who reject the light and who make fun of the truth, find a way to discount the truth, using very often uh, superficial arguments, but seeking to discount the truth. And why did they do that? It says that they are walking according to their own lusts. In order to give in to their selfish desires, their wrongful, their sinful desires, they can't afford to let the Bible stand because it convicts them. And so they argue the case against the Bible because they have a vested interest in it not being true. And we read in verse 5 of 2 Peter 3, for this they... New King James says, willingly forget, or as the King James says, they are willingly ignorant. They choose not to know the truth because the truth condemns them. I was visiting um, in this local fellowship and a traveling salesman who had come to the business of one of the Christians had been invited along. He wouldn't sit down. He stood at the back and he sort of paced a little bit. And afterwards, um, I began to speak with him and, and he was quite um, unwilling to converse. And finally, I said, look, let's go out for coffee and have a talk. And so he agreed to that. And he said that um, he normally wouldn't discuss these matters because he was concerned that he might uh, shake the faith of some. But after listening to me preach, he thought maybe... I could handle it. He told a story how he'd been raised in a non-Christian home. He had um, uh, gone to college, and uh, there he got actively engaged in the Christian ministry there. And during his first uh, break, summer break, he decided to do a comparative study of the four Gospels and had come up against such contradictions in his mind that he could no longer believe the Bible. And so I asked him for some of these contradictions, and uh, they were quite easily answered. Well, he kept getting more and more obscure verses until we were looking at verses in Ezekiel and verses way back in the Old Testament that, um, you, you know, you probably wouldn't bump into in, in a decade. And I began to have the sneaking suspicion that the devil was helping this fellow study the Bible. And uh, we went on for quite a long time. I kept uh, explaining how these were not contradictions. And he said maybe for the first time in a long time, there was a little ray of hope that maybe he could believe what God said and so on. But he kept coming up with these more and more obscure verses. And finally, it, it came upon my soul that there was something I had to say to him. And it was not an easy thing to say. And finally, I interjected and I said, now, listen, you've been asking me questions for hours here. Could I ask you a question? And he said, sure. And I said, are you living with a woman? We were sitting in a restaurant in a, in a booth and he came up over the the table at me like he was ready to attack me. He just sprang to his feet and he, and he shouted out, why would you ask me that? And I said, well, you, you haven't answered my question yet. And he just slumped in the chair, just like he melted. He just slumped in the chair. And he said, well, yes, I am. I said, well, you know, it's evident that um, you have a vested interest in it not being true. You don't want the Bible to be true. And so I said, you know, the Lord has brought us together for a reason. You weren't supposed to be at that meeting tonight. Uh, you were traveling through and you were invited to come. And here I am from another place and God brought us together. And this is your golden opportunity. This is your moment 
in which you need to repent of this and turn back to the Lord, and he'll take you back. And then all of a sudden, all of these so-called problems will evaporate. And all of a sudden, you'll want the Bible to be true. It'll be a comfort to you instead of conviction. And God will begin to open his heart to you, and you won't have all these problems. Well, only this last week, as I was visiting in the same area and brought up this issue, did the brother who invited that salesman along to the meeting tell me that God had restored that dear man. It was so encouraging to me. And you know, in a strange way, just a week or two later, I happened to be in another state a long way away from there, and I was at a conference, and after the conference we were standing talking, and a man began to bring up the very same obscure verses and said that there were lots of issues in the Bible that couldn't easily be solved. <laughs> and I, I was just struck with the fact that the devil doesn't mind quoting Bible verses if he thinks they're to his own advantage. And I said to the man, he, his wife and children were there, I said to him, could we step outside for a minute? He said, I'm fine right here. I said, you know, I think you'd prefer having this conversation outside. And we stepped outside, and I said to him, are you having an affair? And, and the blood just drained from his face. And he dropped his head, and he said, I am. And once again, I shared with him this idea that there are people who don't want the Bible to be true because it condemns their sinful behavior. And I said, this is your moment. God brought me here to speak this word to you, and you need to abandon this and return to your wife, because otherwise you are on the road to destruction. So, dear Christian, this is a solemn thing. There are people who don't want the Bible to be true. They are scoffers. In other words, they speak lightly of the Bible. They treat it as if it's not to be taken seriously because they don't want to take it seriously. They are willfully ignorant because they know that if they take the Bible seriously, they stand condemned before it. Now, God wants us to walk in the light, to step into the light, and to walk with him in fellowship in the light, and he's ready to forgive. He's ready to restore. But he can't deal with people who pretend the Bible isn't true in order to get away, as they think, with their own lustful behavior. So, a solemn warning, and at the same time, a word of encouragement. God is ready to take us back, to restore us. And maybe I'm speaking to someone here, and you've been hiding something in your life. And you've been dabbling with this kind of agnosticism. I'm not so sure the Bible's true. And the reason is because there's something wrong in your life. So hurry to make it right. God is ready to pardon. He's eager to do it. And when he does, all of a sudden, instead of the word of God being a, a searchlight exposing our sin, it becomes a wonderful vehicle of God's comfort and encouragement and instruction and growth when we want the word of God to be true. The Lord help you, and may we see a, a dramatic um, restoration of souls, just like that dear man who responded in faith, confessed his sin, and God willingly and happily took him back. <laughs>